Hello, this is Walter. I'm going to play the role of physicist tonight and answer a question that might be on the minds of people. Uh, I watched a recent movie called The Theory of Everything. It was a real decent movie, uh, and it answered, tried to answer the question of a universal theory that put everything together. Well, I've got the universal theory of everything here, and uh, for people to look at and, and analyze and, and do a little research on it, but you may find it quite interesting. Um, basically, physicists are studying what's called string theory, where the string is a universal um, smallest element in the universe, the possible smallest element. Well, if we have a string that's vibrating, um, it's all going to end up at the same spot in infinity, okay? And uh, basically, all straight lines end up being a, a curve based on our viewpoint of it. So um, we have a string of infinite length, and it connects to each other. They meet at the same place. Uh, this would be the area of the string, the area of the thickness of the string which is variable uh, to um, infinitely small to infinitely large. That will be our symbol to vary that at all of these is the variability is infinitely small to infinitely large. Now we have a, um, a wave occurring and it looks similar to this. Um, it's normally like any other wave. It would be set up similar to this. Okay, and a wave is set up, and what happens is a force is applied to this direction on the stable uh, ring of an infinitely small or infinitely, infinitely large force, creating this uh, vibration to occur. And... Um, this vibration occurs back on itself, and all shapes and forms of matter and energy can be found somewhere in this, in this hole, in the whole thing, the W-H-O-L-E. Now, if you look at the side view where we're probably looking at it, it, it ends up looking similar to this on a side view. Now, what also, what happens is, this acts almost like it's three-dimensional, so it kind of sets up something like a jump rope type pattern that appears in here, which literally forms a sphere of possibilities, and then a sphere of possibilities here of, of vibration in two dimensions. So that possibility creates these little areas of, of circles of vibrating energy which is similar to look like this. Now, inside these vibrating uh, spheres of energy is all shapes in the universe. Well, you've got squares appearing in it. You've got triangular shapes appearing, and you've got spheres appearing all over the place. And this is all held together, and everything is generated. You've got gravity. You've got the force of, of magnetism and electrical forces in it. And now also, uh, to one of the things that we're doing too is the fact that the string itself in the area of the string can also vary in length by shifting the uh, frequencies found within the string itself and by compressing itself a little smaller things, it could actually shrink. So there is also a variable of, of shrinking in size. Now, areas are formed between the extreme ends of the limits of the vibration of the strings forming together to form what we do see in the form of, of limits. For example, if this is the line and this is the frequency of vibration, and all of a sudden we have this frequency of vibration forming what to us is perceived as the form of a human body. And basically it's the frequencies
forming this image with the fingers and everything else of the human body. And the frequencies vibrate and vibrate along this channel here and vibrate along these channels, forming the, the human body. So everything is in is everything in the universe is based on these cycles. We have population uh, cycles, we have food cycles, we have cycles of war, which a lot of times are, are based on population and food supply. We have disaster cycles in the universe. Everything is in cycles. Everything except what's called free will. Free will. And now we're going to talk about uh, free will for the for an in, a moment here. And uh, here's something that's kind of interesting: is by an intellectual being. Okay. When you take an intellectual being, such as ourselves, and we set the limits of the vibrations we control, uh, for example, sound waves in a pipe organ, the larger the pipe, the deeper the note. We also set uh, limits that we choose on frequencies, such as radio waves, uh, limits, frequencies, amplitude, and various things. That. And if you look at it as a clay shape on a potter's wheel, which is an example of pressure waves applied to a spinning clay by the potter's hands. Uh, the intellectual being sets the limits of the infinite variables by choosing, uh, by choosing that. For example, the pressure waves that he applies on this rotating mass of clay produces the shape of the object in the end. Well. An intellectual being has set the limits of the infinite variables by choice, and he's the great I am. The one that said uh, to the sea, this is, this is how far your proud waves will go and no more. The one who sets the planets and stars in their paths for our times and seasons. Well, basically, matter is assembly creation consistency. And love is used as the limit that God chose to set the universe's variables. For example, Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, not proud, not rude, not easily angered. Love does not seek its own, does not um, bear records of wrongs. Love never fails. But uh, hate is on the other side. For example, antimatter, disassembly, destruction, variability. Basically, free will is toward something or consistent or you can choose to be untoward and variable okay so basically we have found god in the fact that god has set limits on this infinite uh a string and chose to set up the universe exactly the way that he has chose to do it thank you very much for your attention i hope you enjoy this film